What if there was a mushroom we could grow like this that could help cure Alzheimer's and dementia, or one that could improve athletic performance, or for sleeping better, or to take so you don't get sick so often? The list of benefits from mushrooms is long. But where do you start? If you're interested in any of these, I hope I can get you started with this list. I've been on a four month journey to understand this mushroom revolution we're in. I've been talking to experts, growers, scientists, and as always, of course, experimenting with them myself. And I was skeptical too. Haley's planting oyster mushrooms. I got more mushrooms to take. <laughs> to help me tell this story, I found a mushroom farm. We are here at Mushroom Mountain. And here they have everything I need to visually show what I'm talking about. Now let me share with you my top five list of medicinal mushrooms that if you take, could really improve your health. And that's not me just making this up. There's a lot of science that goes into it. So let me share the list, then we'll talk about what's actually happening in your body. Let's start with lion's mane. Lion's mane. It is the mushroom that got me most excited about medicinal mushrooms a few years ago when Haley cooked one up for me. Throw these babies in there and get them nice and brown. And then I'm gonna put a sauce over it. It's a wonderful meat substitute and really a delicacy. Yet it is rare to find in a grocery store in part because the shelf life just isn't that great. It definitely tastes like a mushroom. It's known as the brain boosting mushroom. Now I, I hate saying something boosts your brain power because it kind of sounds like snake oil. This thing <laughs> is really good uh, for your brain but it's also what you'll hear in the ads that you now will be getting on your social feeds. Trust me, they are listening. Here at Mushroom Mountain, they grow a ton of lion's mane mushrooms. This is one cute one popping out just a little slit. In fact, this whole wall is lion's manes. They use these uh, to eat. Uh, they might put them in their tinctures. They make honey out of them. Wonderful medicinal mushroom right here. And this is basically exactly how I started with a bag with a bunch of lion's mane mycelium inside. I'm gonna do a time lapse with this lion's mane and we're gonna see what happens. Wish us luck, then we're gonna eat it. It has been found that taking them helps repair the myelin sheath that is found in the nerves of the brain and spinal cord. Two compounds in this mushroom help promote nerve growth factor inside the brain. Something that if we lack can lead to Alzheimer's and dementia. It's also helpful for people recovering from brain and spinal cord injuries. We basically just took this thing, waited 13 days after we cut a slit in it, and poof, out it came. I do think we messed up a little bit because the hole was massive. This is a massive, massive lion's mane mushroom. I've never grown this before. I had no idea what I was doing, but it's way easier than I thought. So I'm pretty excited about that. Even though I have little experience growing lion's mane mushrooms, it fruited so easily. And unlike these other mushrooms, the spores fall from these long spikes that grow out of the mushroom. It's incredible. Now, if you're looking for them out in the natural world, they are around, they grow naturally, but they may be a little bit more difficult to find. And if you were growing them outside, this is what it would look like. All these logs stacked up with holes, plugged with lion's mane mycelium. Unfortunately, it's not the season but it is a good place for us to look for the other medicinal we're looking for, and that is turkey tail. Turkey tail. Now, turkey tail is an amazing little mushroom. It is very common in the eastern forests. This is a widely common mushroom throughout North America. In fact, a lot of mushroom growers see them as weeds. You can go into like a vitamin store and you'll see them selling this mushroom, um, or you could just learn to identify it and you can go out in the woods and you can make a, a tea with it. Now this mushroom is a polypore mushroom, which you can see if you flip it over. Those pores are where it releases the spores. This mushroom has been used in ancient Asian medicine for centuries, and now it's one of the most well-documented and researched medicinal mushrooms. A majority of the studies look at turkey tail for treating various forms of cancer. It's also been shown to have antimicrobial properties, anti-diabetic effects, and improves gut health. All of that in addition to being a support for strong immune health. Now that's one thing most medicinal mushrooms share. More on that in a sec. Trad here explained it this way. This is the number one product taken for cancer treatment in Japan. It's a PSK, it's a polysaccharide that's derived from turkey tail mushrooms. And the great thing about it is that it has little to no side effects. <laughs> and a lot of the drugs people are taking have a lot of different side effects or adverse reactions. The only known 
side effect for this is slightly the slight yellowing of the fingernails that goes away. <laughs> I think I could live with that. Um, turkey tail is a great, uh, wonderful little mushroom. And I, I used to just pass by them for years and now it's like pff, every fungus is significant. Uh, every, even every strain. Because this turkey tail might produce more than this one down below. I mean, these are different colonies. Yeah, so, cool. so that's why they all have to be tested. While we're on the trail, Trad showed me something that's actually really fascinating, a good lead to the next medicinal species, one that I like to call the zombie fungus of the insect world, cordyceps. These are ants that have tracked through a mold called a cordyceps. It'll drill a hole in its armor, and then it would thread up into the muscles and the nerves and into the brain, and it'll steer the ant around like a remote control. It never goes home again, never. It secretes a toxin, and then the mushroom kills the ant and a, a little structure called a cordyceps pops out the back of his brain. I did not think I would see one in South Carolina. I thought they were tropical. I thought they were in other places, but this is so cool. The story is insane. Turns out cordyceps is a genus of fungi that infect insects and humans have been using it for performance enhancement. Now this story gets crazy when you find out that Cordyceps sinensis is the most expensive fungi in the world, growing from the heads of caterpillars in Nepal, China, and Tibet. Now Hamilton here, who is a filmmaker and ethnomycologist, went there to film all of this. And he has a ton of experience with different medicinal mushrooms and seeing people use them across the world, so he shared with me his perspective. The lived experience cannot be denied. Mm -hmm. The amount of people that I know personally and people that I have met through the community and people that I sell mushrooms to and so on and so forth, their experiences cannot be denied. They have healed themselves from chronic pain and illness using medicinal mushrooms. And of course, Hamilton here is talking about a wide range of medicinal mushrooms, which I have in my list, not just the cordyceps he filmed in the Himalayas, which by the way, would be way too expensive for most normal people to take. Luckily for us, places like Mushroom Mountain here have found ways to grow a related species, Cordyceps militaris, and it doesn't have to grow on insects. They grow it in these plastic containers, they can harvest them affordably and package them in various tinctures. That means we can now affordably gain the benefits including immune health, cardiovascular fitness, and exercise performance. Now I've been taking Cordyceps for my workouts. In fact, that's what Stefan, who you might remember from Secrets of the Underground, has also been doing. Cordyceps took me maybe two, three weeks to really start noticing. And that's that's what the best research shows, is that there might be an acute effect. You take a large dose, you might, might have a benefit. You do it for a week, you might have some benefit, but really at like the three week mark is when your performance metrics, VO2 max, some of these other things go up. And the challenge here seems to be to cycle on and off and listen to your body, chaga. Now chaga is the only one that I can't show you right now because it grows on birch trees up north. I do have some powder, but that's about it. And that's why I asked my friend Tony, who lives up in Canada, to show us what it's all about. So today I'm out mushroom hunting and you might be thinking, how are you hunting mushrooms? There's snow everywhere, nothing would be growing. And I guess technically I'm not hunting mushrooms, I'm hunting sclerotia. I'm looking for chaga mushroom, and that's why I'm in this birch forest, because chaga grows on birch trees. Chaga and the beneficial compounds that are inside of chaga depends on the relationship between the fungus and the tree, because chaga really is just a, you know, a hardened mass of chaga mycelium and birch wood. And the compounds that it produces and the compounds that it produces when it grows on birch one of them called betulin is actually a super important compound and betulin comes from birch. So if you just grew chaga by itself or grew the mycelium out on grain or something like that, it wouldn't contain that betulin. So wild harvested chaga that grows on birch is actually important for the beneficial compounds that are inside of the chaga and the reason why people take chaga. But the other interesting thing about chaga is it's a super powerful antioxidant. It is one of the most highest concentration antioxidants uh, of any of the natural products you will ever see. So a lot of people will use chaga for digestive health, for skin health, but also for that antioxidant boost and that immune support. So again, although it doesn't really look like much, it's like a super powerful mushroom. Um, as long as it's properly wild harvested and you know grown on birch like it, it naturally should and also it needs to be properly extracted. 
I should mention Tony does have a mushroom company. I've been using them for a while. They're amazing. And coincidentally, the first one I got was his reishi blend. Reishi. A little bit of reishi. Reishi, sometimes called reishi. It is known as the king of mushrooms. Tony sourced it from China in places like this. And believe it or not, it also grows on logs in South Carolina here at Mushroom Mountain. It's such a cool mushroom and it's surprisingly hard. You see it? Yeah. What? Isn't that cool? I've never seen one in real life. It's a reishi. Yeah, right? Here in South Carolina, they grow it on both logs and in bags like this, of which they can make them look really weird. Reishi is known for helping people sleep well. In fact, the first night I took it, I had great sleep. Well, I took Reishi last night. Wow, I slept like a log. So if you're taking or want to take a medicinal extract, Reishi's really good. In fact, even Dr. Conover, which you might remember from my ketamine video, explained that he uses it in his sleep mix. This is got, so it says nano hemp, which is CBD, magnesium, reishi, theanine, selenic, and tryptophan. Helps people relax. Reishi, the king of mushrooms, rounds out my top five list, along with lion's mane, turkey tail, cordyceps, and chaga. Now, if you didn't already know these mushrooms, keep an eye out because they will be popping up all over the place now that you've heard about them. And I mentioned these because they're very powerful and they're also safe and easy to use. Others might include maitake, shiitake, oysters, enoki, or agarikon. And if you are using others that aren't on my list, let me know down below. Now here is where it's worth noting very briefly what these mushrooms all share. They all have polysaccharides known as beta-glucans. If you've never heard of that before, let this be your first introduction. Simply put, they're found in the cell walls of mushrooms. They're hard. They often don't break down if you just eat them raw, which is why you want to cook a mushroom. Never eat raw mushrooms because they're not good for you. Um, the mushrooms are composed of chitin. So it's like, it's like you're eating the, a, a chemically component identical to what's in a crab shell. If you eat a raw mushroom, it's passing through you. If you cook a mushroom, um, you're actually getting access. Your body can access the protein that I just talked about. The medicinal properties I'm gonna talk about. I would just maybe not eat raw mushrooms. There's not that many you can eat raw. Now that we've cleared up that point, back to the beta-glucans. The beta-glucans are what give the mushroom its immunoregulatory properties. What that means is it helps increase your immune cells to fight an infection, and at the same time, it can regulate back if you start to have an adverse immune overreaction. It's crazy, isn't it? It means you can regulate up or down at the same time. I know at this point, some of you may be wondering, what about the other mushrooms listed as medicinal mushrooms by some people? Well, I can tell you if you're curious about say Amanita muscaria, I did a video on that already. And then there's these mushrooms, what most people might consider magic mushrooms. They're medicinal in a very different kind of way, which I could do a video on if anybody's interested. Now I want to wrap things up and just recommend that all of you out there look into medicinal mushrooms. It is a fascinating field. I've been diving in. Uh, there's a few books that I would recommend if you're brand new to it. Uh, Christopher Hobbs, Medicinal Mushrooms. It's a really good, easy to read book. But then if you really want to get into the details and what's happening, you got to check out Robert Rogers, The Fungal Pharmacy. And then he followed that up with The Human Clinical Trials. Now these are dense books and they go through all of the actual studies. Now, in a video like this, I can't go through all of the studies. And if you're skeptical right now, you probably should be. That's important. But if you do take something with you, I hope it's just a general understanding that there are compounds out there that maybe aren't as popular in our culture as they could be. And if you mix them into your diet, it might actually benefit you in certain ways. And obviously, a lot of this takes an understanding of your own body. And you have to understand how to take herbals, which is a whole different thing to itself. And if this matters to you, no, I'm not getting a kickback from Trad or Hamilton or Tony, all who run amazing medicinal mushroom companies. And the reason I reached out to them is they clearly have the most interest in these compounds so they know it better than almost anyone. If you want to continue your mushroom education, I encourage you to go follow them. Uh, links down in the comments and there's some all around here. You can also watch another one of my Stone Age Man videos. And thanks again to my patrons who are helping fund this wildlife education. We'll see you in the next one.